Now, we're contrasting our unity that we have in this one common faith with so-called ecumenism, organized unity versus organic unity. Ecumenical movements have sought unity among Christian churches, Catholic, Orthodox, Reformed, Evangelical, Pentecostals, and others. Specifically, they are initiated by leadership, normally from various churches, to promote peaceful coexistence and cooperation between church organizations. And not only church organizations, they can go and uh, try to promote the same kind of oneness with Muslims and Buddhists and all kinds of other faiths in their ecumenical effort. Now these kinds of movements and the inspiration behind them, they have spawned pastoral associations as well as Christian unity events for prayer, gospel, and worship services. Now these types of efforts certainly can be commendable. However, they are outside the purview of the New Testament. Since the apostles didn't espouse setting up various church groups and organizations. Now, what is organic unity? Let's highlight just a couple of verses uh, on this topic. In 1 John chapter 3, verse 14, we read, We know that we have passed from death to life because we love the brethren. In Ephesians chapter 4, verse 2, following this organic theme, with all lowliness and gentleness, with long-suffering, bearing with one another in love, endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the uniting bond of peace. We move on from that in uh, so far as organic is concerned. It's defined as something from these verses of life. The oneness or unity among all believers is not an organizational thing. It is due to a new life, a new birth. When we are born anew with the life of Christ, the nature, the DNA of that life is sourced in His love. We spontaneously and automatically love all those who are also born of the same life of Christ. No matter the race or how different we are from each other, we all share in the unity of the Spirit implanted in every single believer at the time of life, the regenerating life of Christ. Believers do not need to learn this oneness or need any program or organizational effort to achieve it. We just need to keep what we already were born with. This is organic unity. You already have it because that which is born of the Spirit of God is the human spirit, and that's the new birth that we all share in when we were regenerated by His eternal life. Organic uni unity does not need to wait for any leadership or events for it to happen, shocking as that may sound. Each believer is responsible and has the life ability, notice, the life ability to reach out to others around them. Fellowship with those outside your church, brothers and sisters, outside your comfort zone. Invite other believers over for a potluck meal or fellowship. You're not trying to start another house church. No, you just, you just because we are in the same body. Let's enjoy the unity of the Lord's Ecclesia we already have. Now, on my way over here today uh, to record this, I heard a uh, radio announcer, Dennis Prager, talking uh, to somebody who was totally uh, turned off on, on institutional churches. So consequently, they were raised a Catholic, and then they saw some hypocrisy. You'll always see hypocrisy. It's always out there. I mean, even in the best of circumstances, you're going to find a degree of hypocrisy. And if you're looking for the perfect church, join it, and it'll become imperfect just by your very presence, <laughs> just so you know, right? Now, having said all of that, uh, Dennis Prager was really uh, uh, talking to this person who was talking about another person who had gone through this, and this other person was so disenchanted with churches in general, with believers 
in general, that they completely bowed out of everything. And this man was talking about how he had gone and met with evangelicals and found them eventually. Uh, they found hypocrites there. And so he just said, I'm, you know, I am done. And he's joined a uh, illustrious audience here in the United States of, uh, of America of some 33 million or so who are just done. Now, they're believers in the Son of God, the Son of Man, but they've given up on, on meeting with anyone else. Now, now, Dennis Prager said something really fascinating. Well, during this time of COVID, and we're all, especially here on the West Coast of the United States, we're all under some form of quarantine. His suggestion was to call somebody up and you know, begin to uh, uh, meet them and greet them. He was encouraging this. He said, look it. You need to call somebody up that you can, you know, have a, 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 some modicum of, of commonality with. Well, the common faith. Let's try that. You know, they know the Lord, right? You know the person knows the Lord. Okay, and the Bible says that not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but so much the more as you see the day approaching. You say, well, they're not allowing me to meet anymore. I can't even meet. Uh, you can meet. You can meet in a home. You can invite somebody over for coffee. Yeah, there's, there's all kinds of ways you can do this. And so Prager's trying to encourage Christians to do this. And he's Jewish. <laughs> okay, so what I'm saying here, brothers and sisters, we do have a common faith. We are encouraged to meet and greet other believers that are different than us. We will, from time to time, be completely disappointed in God's people. I've gone through that. I know many of you have, and you've said, hey, man, I'm giving it up. Man, this, this is fakery at a high level, you know. And yet, hey, the ecclesia of the world, the secular world, I mean, if you want to get into food fights and uh, whatever, uh, you know, you can show up at a town hall meeting. It's very active, uh, very active all over this country right now, as a matter of fact, and the world. But now's the time to come apart to be with God's people, to enjoy their fellowship. You share a common faith, a common bond. It's organic. It's life. It's not something organized. And it's available to us all. And it expresses the glory of God. It's only when we come together to celebrate His life, to express His love, that the glory is there. You've got the electricity. You've got to turn the switch on. And the only time you can do that is with another brother or sister in Christ. Turn the switch on. Come to his life and enjoy his fellowship with the saints. We're made in his image, and his image is the Father, the Son, and the Spirit. And we are made in his image to fellowship with him and with one another. Praise the Lord for this, the beginning of this series with One Body Life again. This is Doug Krieger. And by the way, this is Henry Hahn's message that I'm sharing with you today. Again, I am the Aaron and he's the Moses. <laughs> God bless you guys. We'll see you next time. Amen.